Hey gang, Evan Sutton here. Today we're gonna to talk about the new Lemur for iPad app from Line. Uh, this is part one of a two-part series. Today we're gonna to be using the editor to build our own interface and it will be available for download. And stay tuned for part two where we actually put it to use in an Ableton Live set. Now the original Lemur was one of the first multi-touch touchscreen hardware controllers and uh, it came with an editor then called the Jazz Editor where you would actually put together the interfaces that you wanted to use. Now the good people at Line have released the software for iOS and uh, we're going to use the Lemur Editor here today to build our own interface. So I have the uh, editor open and the first thing I'm going to do is check my settings and I'm going to set up my library path and just make sure it's set to my uh, my chosen lemur folder that I've created. This is where it's gonna save things like presets and modules that I build. And then over here, I'm gonna make sure auto map is turned on. What auto map is gonna do is it's gonna make it so that every time I add a new object, it will automatically be mapped to this MIDI target and is this type of message. Most of the time, me personally, I'm gonna use a control change message because I'm gonna use it as a controller as opposed to playing it like an instrument. So I'll leave it at control change, we'll hit okay. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an ad hoc network. And if I go up to my network preferences here, this is on a Mac, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my airport on and go here and click create network. Now I'll just name it Evan Sutton's MacBook Pro. That's what my computer likes to call itself. I'll hit okay. Now once that's created, you can go ahead onto your iPad and make sure that it's connected as well. Now if your iPad and your computer are on the same Wi-Fi network and they're both running Lemur software, then you will be able to actually connect. So I'm gonna hit this play button and we're gonna to connect to the Lemur. I can see my iPad here, it's the average man, but not your average iPad, perhaps. I'll hit connect and now we're connected. Now you can do this on any Wi-Fi network, but the reason why we use an ad hoc network is because you have total control over it. An ad hoc network is a decentralized wireless network that originates from your computer, and what you can do is, for one thing, you can make sure that nothing else is on it, but the other thing that you can do is have it run very, very quickly because everything's very close together, you can password protect it, and also, who wants to get to a gig and have to ask a sound guy if there's a wireless network that you can use. So this is really, really helpful and very important. All right, so now that we're connected, the iPad will reflect whatever we do in the lemur panel here. And this is where we're going to actually add our objects and create our interface. So I'm gonna go over to the palette here, and this is where I find all of the objects. And I'm gonna start out with a fader. I can just double click here and drop it on there. And if your iPad is connected, then it should reflect these changes you make. And that's really, really handy because you can actually see what things are gonna look like, make sure they're the right size and visible in the proper way. It's just very quick. It's a nice workflow where you can actually look and touch and feel as you're editing in here. So as you saw just a moment ago, I can resize these things. I can option drag, which is super handy. I can even hold down shift and select more than one at a time and option drag those. So I've created a handful of faders here these faders are gonna be used to send a control signal within a range. Typically it's zero to 127 if we're working with MIDI, but I might use these for a dry wet effects level, a send level, or the volume of an actual track that I'm controlling. So I'm gonna try and align these, and I'll go ahead and I'm gonna select one of these and I'll go up here to this magic wand. Notice that it's been mapped to the target MIDI and as the control change message. That's what we set up in our settings previously. But this magic wand here is going to set everything up as I click it, each individual object, to the next available MIDI controller number. This is a great way to make sure that you're not, there we go, they're all different now. This is a great way to make sure that you don't have overlapping control signals. Sometimes it's really easy to end up with a bunch of controllers controlling the same thing if you're working with something like this. I know I've run into that a lot. So we've set that up. A great thing about the Lemur software is that I can hold down the E key and I can actually use my mouse to move things around as if it were on my iPad. So that's very nice. Now, one other thing that I might do here is, is grab one of the text objects and I can just drop it in here. And let's say I want to label this. Maybe I'll label it something like Echo. I'm gonna go to where it says text here, not the name but where it says text is actually where we're gonna change what it says in there, and I'll name it Echo. And then if I want, I can have a background color, I can change that down here. This is the objects panel, and this is where we deal with the look and the feel of the objects 
color, font, things like that. And then we can deal with the behavior, which we're going to deal with in a moment. Now I can go ahead and check transparent also. And that way it doesn't actually have a background. And this I really like because as you can see now, it looks like a nice little label. So I can actually see what I'm doing. And just so you know, you can actually touch where the label is now and it won't be blocked. And this is actually sort of behind where the fader is. It's not going to stop uh, all of the touch messages that you are giving from getting through. Now the next object that I'm going to take a look at is the multi ball. I'll double click there and bring it in. Now the multi ball is an XY controller. That means that it sends two separate control signals, one for vertical movement of the ball and one for horizontal movement. Now this exists in a handful of other controllers, but we're going to use the multi ball today to show what really makes the lemur software unique. And that's the physics engine. So I'm going to click here and I can change the color of it if I want. And I'm going to go ahead and go to the behavior tab. And this is where we can set up how the object translates your movement into a control signal. So right now, the physics is set to interpolate, which means it takes your movements pretty literally as you move it around. If I, when I let go, the ball stops moving. But if I go here and I click mass spring, then we're going to be using the physics engine. And I will click and drag and notice it's kind of jiggling around. And it will continue moving for a little while and bounce off the edges if I sort of fling it. Now this is a lot of fun and it can be really intuitive for certain types of controllers. So I'll go ahead and I'll also change the friction. And the friction basically controls how long it takes for the ball to stop moving once you let go. So I'll put that to 0.1 and we can see that it can move around for quite a while. And now the only other thing to do is, uh, is set up the MIDI connection for this multi-ball controller. And I'll go ahead and we have X. It, the target is MIDI 0 and it's controller 5. But also we can set up controller Y, which was automatically set up when we clicked on the magic wand here. It's been set up to controller 6. Remember, it is two separate controls, X for horizontal and Y for vertical. So you do have to MIDI learn them separately if, if you're using MIDI learn in Ableton Live. What I like to do is uh, turn off the mass spring for a moment and I, I set the ball in the bottom left corner and then to MIDI learn the thing that I want for the Y axis, I just drag it along the edge here so that there's no horizontal movement and then to MIDI learn the thing I want to use with the X axis, I just drag it along the bottom here so that there's no vertical movement. And that way Ableton Live can differentiate between the two separate signals. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the lemur daemon. Okay, and the lemur daemon is basically going to be the interface between uh, our lemur controller and the rest of the MIDI world inside of our computer. So it's going to broker deals between lemur and say Ableton Live. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click add and I'm going to click daemon MIDI in and I'll choose daemon output zero. You're also going to select output zero or the matching output on your iPad. We'll talk about that a little later. So I'll double click there. I'll double click on my average man here and click lemur in zero and I'll hit connect. And now what we've got is a daemon output sending to the lemur and we're, we can also add an input as well. And now what I've got is my daemon connected to my lemur. And the daemon is sort of going to be acting as the MIDI device from within the computer. So in Ableton Live or Logic or whatever you're using, you will select daemon output zero uh, from your MIDI devices menu. So now we've done just enough to get started uh, with the lemur. I'm going to go ahead and save this by clicking on the disk here. I'm going to say starting point. And you'll be able to download one of my personal lemur templates. It's a nice starting point and it has a couple of different objects and some text in there. And it just gives you some idea of things uh, that you can use to get going. So I'm going to hit save there. I'll replace my old one. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the lemur editor. The lemur software is now available for iOS from Line. And you can get it in the App Store. This is Evan Sutton, also known as Astrolith. You can catch me at astrolith.net. I'm the co-creator and developer of the Sound Design and Synthesis program here at DubSpot in New York City. You can catch me here as well as online. Uh, stay tuned for part two. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. 
Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.